city And it's far from black and white Ringing in 2020, I am back, I'm refreshed, recharged for 2020. This will be episode 15 today with Tony Knox, photographer, predominantly known as a wrestling photographer through the Northwest Independence, but UK wide also. It was brilliant getting Tony on. We've been talking back and forth for about two or three months to get the interview done, and we've finally done it, and it was superb. I'll look up to Tony. Obviously, when you see an image with these companies in the UK, nine times out of ten, I'd say, you see the copyright and Tony's name is in the corner for that photo. Synonymous. Synonymous with the independence in the UK. So, here we go. Rather than me babbling on, episode 15, Stu's Wrestling Podcast. Mr. Tony Knox, photographer extraordinaire. Enjoy. Well, it is my honour and privilege to have on episode 15 of Stu's Wrestling Podcast, photographer known up and down the UK circuit in wrestling, Tony Knox. How's it going, Tony? Hi, Stu. Um, it's, it's a lot better now we've finally managed to do this. After months of uh, trying it, we've finally achieved it. I, I thought it was mithering you. <laughs> not, not at all. Mithering is getting 15 requests a day from various wrestlers going, Hi, mate. Uh, you know, that's my drink, but um, you're not my drink at all. I like, I like that. I like, I like you just replied to me. <laughs> I thought I might, I thought I might piss you off, but that's all right. It's, it's, it's good. Uh, thanks, thanks for sparing, thanks for sparing time, Tony. I know you're busy up and down the country at different shows, and obviously your photography, your photography is synonymous within the circuit, you know. And um, I'm just, it's just a privilege to get you on. Um, firstly. How did you, when did you first start getting into wrestling, aside from the photography? When did you first start watching wrestling? That's my first pertinent question. Um, I first started, I think it was December of 2000, and what, 2000 or, or 2001. I sometimes mix them up. I started doing stuff for All Stars. Um, that's, that's how I did the wrestling photography all prior to that. Um, I was 18 when I first went to, actually I was 19, I went to wrestling uh, event in Rill on holiday. I'd just actually been chucked out my second art college. Um, that's where I learned photography. I had a habit of getting chucked out. And then when you're 19, you kind of discover, uh, you know, girls. <laughs> and um, it, it was weird because I'd just been chucked out the second art college. And I went on holiday with some of the previous art colleges from St. Helens Art College with, with a group of friends. I went to Rill. And it was kind of a weird time because everyone was talking about, like, oh, I can't wait to go to uni going up. I was like, well, I've just been kicked out of my head. So, um, basically, I was getting kind of bored with the company. So I went walking around real and saw, like, uh, a wrestling event was on. And I'd always been a lifelong fan of watching World of Sport because I grew up in the 70s, hence, like, I was six when I first saw Star Wars, you know, so... I was a 70s child in that way, so hence probably the inappropriate humour, the uh, bizarreness about me. Um, so what it was was I went and saw Big Daddy aged 18 and watched him wrestle. So it was like a childhood dream was to see like Big Daddy and see this obese man who actually hit someone with a bucket. And the other guy kind of broke character for a sec and looked like he was going to beat the shit out of Big Daddy. That was kind of amusing. But, um, yeah, so that made me think, oh, I really want to photograph wrestling. So I let it slide and then ended up doing like a B-Tech in Wigan College and then went on to doing a degree in Sunderland University. And then during that time, I started to get very influenced by heroic figures. So my artwork kind of come a full circle. So it was a project that I wanted to do um, again, but also before I went to university, Went to Southport and I saw Davey Boy. I do a thing and I took some images there, but just more like as a fan at that point. And then I took it with Slide. I've not done anything really with them images. I've just kept it as archive. And I just decided in 2000, I think it was 2000, I decided I wanted to pursue the, uh, the heroic roles or fallen heroes. So that's when uh, I contacted Brian um, Dixon from All Stars many years ago 
and um, started doing stuff with All Stars, and I still do stuff with All Stars to this day. So you've still got a good, good working relationship with uh, Brian yeah. Dixon? Yeah, I, I have. Um, I don't fall out with people. Um, I'm very easy to get on with. Um, so I've got relationships like from All Stars from, I think, 2000 to 2001, uh, GPW. Uh, I started working for them in 2004. Um, still working for them now. Um, Future Shock, uh, I think it was 2000. Five or 2006 when I'm still working with them present day you know so I have a relationship where I help build up companies yeah um, part of the cog of the machine um, that I just help kind of develop you know visually what yeah. they're doing and I photograph people from like when I first done All Stars I like photographed Dean Allmark he was 18 now he's 35 I'm still photographing Dean so I've seen Dean Allmark grow, you know, as from a, a good young wrestler to one of the leading best in the UK, without a doubt. You know, one of them talents who should have been everywhere, really. Yeah. But because he was in the all-star bubble for a period of time, people didn't realise how brilliant a performer he was until now he's been given the opportunity to wrestle in uh, such places as uh, Wrestlegate, who oh, thankfully I work for them as well. So, um, yeah, what's the next question? How do you find, do you have a lot of scheduling conflicts because you're involved with so many promotions? That's me question. Yeah, I do. Um, so I try and work with people. So what I, I make sure I do is I try and um, do as many shows as I can for the certain companies. Certain companies like TNT, they're going to take my priority because I've worked with TNT since the second show. And if I have a major conflict or I'm out the country, the certain photographers who I trust will do a good job and they won't usurp me. I'll work with them, we'll work together, you know, in that capacity. You know, who will fill in that void with them? Like sometimes I've been triple booked. So I'll try and find like two replacements to sort that show. So there's uh, people locally like Lisa Hughes. Uh, she's great. I mean, Lisa's come from being a fan to being a quite talented photographer. She's a nice girl. Uh, I like Lisa. And there's there's other people as well f- f- around the country. Uh, people like Gordon Harris, who's a nice guy. Um, like I try and get Gordon to fill in. Um, you know, th- there's some really wonderful photographers out there, but there's also people who aren't, who are kind of used to type people who the fans and they'll do anything they can to kind of you know undermine it really but they don't realise the damage they're doing because they, they're just basically fans who I don't know it's people who, who are so desperate to be a part of something when realistically they shouldn't because they haven't got the expertise um, they might be not very good with people and I think being backstage is not a right but it's an um, Some photographers do. Some photographers think that that's fine to release. Like some photographers show backstage uh, to me, probably because I kind of started with all stars and that element. That backstage should remain backstage. You shouldn't see behind the curtain because it, it then compromises that state of disbelief, doesn't it? It's lost the mystique. Hasn't it? Well, it's gone, isn't it? If you see pe- people, uh, faces and heels coexisting together in a really small room, it- it's not saying, oh, look at this insight. No. Just because WWE have decided to do it because they've got a big network that they've got to justify entertainment. So they're going more into the personal lives of the wrestlers and showing them out of context of the ring. You know, just because they're doing that doesn't mean that everyone else should also jump on board that. Just because someone's showing the secrets doesn't mean that's still a good thing to do or a good precedent to do. If anything, it's, it's probably quite a destructive way of, of maintaining that business model for years to come because people won't believe it. It's probably why their company sometimes goes through different transitions, but it's 
like it landed day WWE is a television show mainly, isn't it? It's yeah. a television show. And they do a sterlingly good job at what they do, but it's just a television show. We think about what most people talk about, but they're just regages being, oh, I saw this on the telly, instead of going to the magic of a live event that isn't a television show. It's completely interactive, and anything could happen, and sometimes it does. So that, I think that's one of the magics of wrestling to me, is that even though there's, there's a series of matches that are going to go on, there's going to be like theatre. It's, it's basically, to me, wrestling is theatre in its most purest, beautiful form. It's just art. It's just showing this whole circus of performance that is going on with fantastic performers who just make people in awe with them because they give everything. Not that I'm, uh, not that that's just our favourite wrestlers on the current British scene, but maybe if you could tell us a few few of the ones that you know, stand out for you. It's not it's not that you're playing favourites or anything. It's obviously I'm sure you like many many stars, uh, but who 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 are some of the standout ones? To me, uh, one of the best talents of I've ever seen is is Joey Haynes, local, fantastic, charismatic, uh, had many of the belts, but alas, has not really been given the opportunity, like some of the other promotions have never booped him, Progress has never booped him, uh, and I just sometimes shake my head, it, you know, it, it's with the wrestling thing, it, it's a networking system, and it, if you're not in the pocket, you know, if you're not friends with the people that in charge, certain people get overlooked, and the cream doesn't always, you know, go to the top. Sometimes it does. Sometimes people like like Martin Kirby, like I'm made up for Martin at the moment because he's actually got to fill his dream in a way and um, to go to Japan and start wrestling in Japan. I remember speaking to him a few years ago, going, you know, oh, you should really go to Japan, and I could see. I didn't mean it in a bad way, but I could see him being crushed because he hadn't been given that opportunity. And thankfully, that opportunity has come to him. Various people haven't had that opportunity. So people like Joey Hayes, um, Crash Boat, uh, one of the best tag teams I've ever seen, if you get the chance to see them. I've seen him, you know. Yeah, I have. Uh, a couple of years ago at TNT. Yeah. Superb. Incredible. They're, they're called... Uh, boy 1 and Boy 2 in Rise. I kind of cement myself into certain companies um, because, you know, I end up travelling with a lot of the wrestlers as well. Um, I try and give opportunities. So when I'm booked for other promotions outside the Northwest, um, I've been doing BWR for a few years. They're an incredible little promotion that is um, going to go to huge you know, in some respects, maybe one day they'll tour, but uh, it's called British Revolutionary yeah. Wrestling. I've had Rich, I've, I've had Rich on the show. Yeah, yeah, they're great, so it, it's a bit of a trek to go to Grimsby, but it, it's well worth it, like the last show, they had a Grizzly Young Vets, you know, they, they, they're a group of lads who are all wrestlers who are basically, like, there's not much to do in Grimsby in all fairness. The nice seaside, but it's a great place to maybe walk out and drown yourself. <laughs> but that's about it, really. <laughs> um, they've got good fish and chips. Yeah. They, they're a group of lads who decided to get a little promotion together about two and a half years ago, maybe. And they've just worked their arse off in, like, trying to put on the best shows. They had, like, um, Kip Sabian for a while before he went off to America. He was one of their belt holders. They had Jimmy Havoc. So when you look at their roster, it's it, it actually had such huge names. You know, they've, they've just strived to do the best they can do. And it's, to them guys, it's not about making money. It, it's about yeah. making a legacy. And I think that's been really like fantastic to be a part of their journey. But like one of my favourite promotions, obviously, is like TMT in Liverpool. Because like, Jay Apter has given everything. He's, he's give everything he can. Um, a lot of the guys help out. They make sure that they're just trying to do the best they can do. And continuously, you know, it, it, it's as though with wrestling, it is a community of people who just want everything to be as best that it's possible. It's, a, you know? it's very organic in it, TNT. Yeah, 
It, it was, it's got to be, but you've needed that, like, think ahead of Jay after, you know, kind of working behind the scenes, writing scripts, doing stuff, you know, working with Kira Moran. Um, you know, it, it, it's a team. And I think for me, like, even sometimes when he, he contacts me at all times and he's like, oh, we've got this guy. And I'm like, what? How have you managed to get, you know? It, it, it's one of them, but like I used to work for Defiance as well. Um, that was one of my favourite companies to work for. Uh, I loved Defiance. I loved it in what culture when they brought me in. I was, I was like, great. Um, for a decade, I worked with uh, Fine Spirit magazine. So one of one of the reasons why I'm doing the wrestling photography is it started off as an art project for me. So in 2000, it was part of my artwork. So we did an exhibition. Of, uh, wrestlers. Um, one of the whole thing about All Stars was they had some American stars like Jake Roberts was on there. Uh, also, they had like Young Dean, Arl Marks, Robbie Brookside, stuff like this. So I was wanted to do uh, a series of portraits of uh, the wrestlers. So I was shooting uh, a new format called Medium Format. I was doing portraits of, of the wrestlers backstage. So uh, I got a few gems. And the thing is with wrestling, you kind of get into that community. When you go in, you're very respectful. And um, I know that it's an honour to be there. So but over the years, I've kind of like, I just walk in. Oh, I tell me, how are you? So I was just doing like a series of portraits of Jake Roberts. And to me, that was kind of some of my favourite images. But from after I had the exhibitions, like, I met Nigel McGuinness, who was worked for All Stars in 2001, uh, probably till 2003, probably worked there. So we used to see Nigel a bit. I actually seen him uh, two days ago at um, the William Regal event. I was working that. I was working with Chris Booker, who organised the show. He used to be the boss of uh, Future Shock for a period of time. Um, so I have good relationships with people I work with throughout years so it's not even like a sense of like you see someone for a length of time it, it's for a, it's becoming for a decade now with me I've been doing the wrestling photography for like 18 19 years now so I've seen people's careers start and end I've seen trad you know certain people have had tragic careers and certain careers have stopped. There's been losses like Chris Trav, Chris Travis, you know, and, and you Trav for a few years. Um, you see such great stars. You know, the, the photography for me, it's like, it's it's an honour that I'm in their lives for a period of time. And if it can help someone, well. And I think that's always been my attitude, is kind of, without them, like, I can't do the job I want to do. And I've, I can only compete with myself. I can't compete with other photographers. It's whatever they do, it's it's up to them. You know, there's no point getting in this ever decreasing circle of, oh, I'm the best, you're not the best. It's nonsense. I can only be responsible for myself. I can only work with myself. And I think um, recently for me, with FSM closing recently, I had to question what is my role for a decade I could help work with the editor and select people for the one to watch. So I had a little bit of say, I had a little bit of influence in what was going in, so I could help shape and help a lot of the guys coming up. Where that is no longer the case with the magazine that voted, I had to kind of say, okay, well, what is my role now? Because it's not as influential as it was with that closing the magazine. It's made me just look at the jobs more instead of I don't have to overcompensate for everything. I realised for like a decade I was overcompensating for everyone. It was like the first time I met Tony Stone like, and, and you within a second like, um, that she was going to be WWE. I made sure I photographed Tony in Liverpool, you know, and you, you could see people. You can see people who stand out. You can tell they're going to be stars. Some people, I, I just look at them and they're like, they're going to be massive. That they've got that a factor about them. And there's a lot of people coming out where there's a lot of other wrestlers that you look at and you're like, 
haven't got it, you know. They, they just, some of them try hard, but they, they just haven't got it. You know, it needs to be an integral part. What makes someone interesting is it, sometimes, it's, it's a cruel business. It's, it's, as harsh as that sounds as well, it, you know, it's a bit, I suppose there's so many places to work now as well, isn't there? Yeah, there is. Who, um, have you ever been over to the States photography, with photography, sorry? No. No. Not just always, always uh, UK. Yeah, it's just uh, just with the wrestling regard. Well, like the furthest I went was mm. uh, Dublin when I photographed. Um, I done a photo shoot with um, Prince. Oh God, now he now he's Finn Balor. Fergal, oh, David, yeah. Fergal. So I met up with Fergal. Um, talked him into doing a shoot uh, for the magazine. So the idea was. Uh, Fagel was off injured at the time and I was photographing I was doing ringside photography for uh, TNA at the time because I used to be the photographer for TNA when they came over to England so uh, that was quite fortunate uh, I, I basically it was kind of the coolest thing you could do is I remember contacting Simon who worked for TNA at the time uh, and he was saying like is there anyone you want for the Guest list and was like, uh, Is it all right if I bring Fergal Devon? <laughs> and he was like, huh? was like, He was like, Yeah. It, it was kind of funny because I did like a photo shoot with Fergal and a uh, lovely guy. And we went to the brewery in Dublin, uh, the Guinness Brewery, because I knew he, he was interested in like the Dublin thing and the, the Guinness, he liked Guinness. So I was trying to recreate the James Dean. Uh, walk shot. There was a certain shot which a photographer did, which name is Jason at the moment. But he, it was for Time magazine that um, it was like something like 6 a.m. in the morning, and James Dean was walking down the street in the rain with a trench coat. So I recreated a little bit of that, but on the streets of Dublin uh, outside the uh, brewery of, of uh, Guinness factory. So with Fergal, then we went over to. Uh, TNL uh, when they did this small show in uh, Dublin and it was a really small venue it was it was amazing so I went backstage uh, with with uh, TNA and there's Sting you know in this small like backstage area it was kind of funny I was like it was just bizarre because like I've met Sting I've met Hogan uh, photographed them you know and it's it, it's that point of when you meet the, you know the people who were in your childhood who you used to watch as a teenager or whatever and you meet them it's like mm. it, was, it was kind of one of them moments but like a list of some of my favourite wrestlers uh, Kenzo Nakasaki and Justin Fundeliger so in 2004 I decided that I was wanted to train as a wrestler for an art project and I was going to videotape the training sessions of me making that transition so uh, I found a training school at that point, it was GPW. So what I said to GPW is, I will work with you. So that was where Mothman was born. And during the time I was training, my father died. So I think a lot of internal anger was also, the wrestling training helped me get a lot of anger. And because of that connection, because I felt like GPW was there for me during that time, like I was going through grief. Um, it just made me very connected with the wrestling community. And so that's why I had a sense of, you know, loyalty to to the wrestling With GPW, I worked with them for a few years. And then I got commissioned by the St. Helens Council to do a Mothman event. Um, I called it Mothman Midsummer Madness. During that point, GPW Training School suddenly closed down. And then I had to find Future Shock Training School, which thankfully Dave Rain, who was the head trainer at the time, was also a friend that I had met at GPW. So I got there during that time with GPW in 2004, and I already knew a lot of the guys who were in Future Shock because of that. So we ended up then working with Future Shock as well as GPW and did the uh, Mothman Summer Madness show. Um, in the middle of St. Helens uh, and I wrestled Joey Days and Joey's an incredible wrestler and he even managed to get a match out of me that I'd actually wrestled 
about various people I didn't tell them. So yeah. When when they they heard of Mothman, um, but I didn't say like you know that was me. It was kind of like a bit of a running kind of comedy thing almost. So um, yeah, it was good fun. How hard yeah. how hard was training Tony? I I asked that to a lot of the guys. How how hard is it uh, initially? Um, it, for me, uh, I've always been very hyperactive, so I really enjoyed it. Um, I wasn't that good at it. Now. Uh, I think I gave myself a very unrealistic time frame to, to do stuff. Instead of wood training now, it's a lot more advanced. Uh, the training skills were an awful lot more higher levels than they were then. Because I remember, like, at GPW years ago, we used to, like, be bumping on school mats. You know, we didn't have a ring at that point. You know, I was, I was actually trained. It, it's kind of really strange when I look back and at the people who were surrounding me. You know, uh, the late, he, he was the head trainer at the time, um, late, who sadly passed away um, about two years ago. Lee was the trainer, but the other trainer was like, well, Heresy helped out uh, John Brannigan. Uh, we had Damon Lee, who sometimes took classes, deadly Damon Lee. Um, other people who were around there at a young age was like Joey Hayes. We also had CJ Banks, uh, Matt, Matt Taylor Richards, should I say, who's now in progress, as, not as a talent, but as one of the people who can make a lot of waves because he's an incredible guy. Um, but it was surrounded by like a monk of talents who have gone on to do amazing things throughout their career. And I was quite fortunate to be in that class, 2004, in a way. But I, I, my coordination wasn't great, but I, I did take the challenge quite well. But every few years, like when certain promotions asked me, like, oh, can you do Mothman? I have to go back to training. Like the last time I, was, I got trained a little bit with um, Infinite to do uh, the BWP Rumble. So that was that was a while, but I haven't done Mothman in the ring for about um, a year and a half, probably probably uh, no, maybe about a year and a half. One of the reasons why is because I had to donate my kidney to my sister. Oh um, right, okay. So I did a kidney transplant. Yeah. Um, last December, not December gone, but December before, and um, like I'm still I've still been kind of healing over the past year. I can well imagine, yeah. So um, that's why I haven't gone into the ring and done like Mothman just in case because my body's still like in the state of healing because still got twinges and stuff. So um, yeah, that's one of the things. But I think one of the things over the past few years that's been really good for me is the car journeys with the guy. You know, travelling with uh, Kevin Lloyd, a wonderful talent, great guy. Uh, used to really enjoy travelling with Danny Hope and Joey Hayes. Yeah. We're traveling also with like every now and again with Big Joe, um, and it was, it was amazing, really good fun. So it, it's just like I really enjoy the car journeys because you just can talk about other things outside of wrestling, yeah, but of course. Big, yeah, personally, there it's a social aspect, I really enjoy that social aspect with, with everyone. You know, good friendships are made. Have you, sure, have you ever gone to a rise show by any chance? I know you're based in Wales. Right, no. Do you know what, Tony? I'm, I'm, I'm abysmal with getting to shows, and it, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, it, yeah, it's terrible, really. It's just with, with my day job, you know, yeah. it's getting the time because obviously uh, BWP's only up the road from here. Are you going on the twenty fourth? <laughs> I need to, I need to check my road. Is he doing it on a Saturday or a Sunday? Uh, I'll just tell you now because I'm, actually, I'm actually there. On um, twenty, actually it's the twenty fifth, and it's a Saturday the twenty fifth. I'll have a look. I'll have a look. I'm sure. I think I'm in. It's it's yeah. I, I tell Saxon all the time. You know, I'll be there. I'll try and get there. But yeah, I, I'm I'm horrendous as it goes because obviously I'd love I'd love to do I'd love to do the shows, especially the local ones, and then obviously the UK ones. It's a real shame because like even with you know BWP, I mean he he does try. Um, they have some really good talent, and they've been investing in a lot of younger talent coming in. You know, there's people like Chase Alexander, who's absolutely crazy good. 
you know, he's ridiculously good. He's got the look. He's got the look as well, hasn't he? Looks fantastic. You know, and you've got Cameron Solis, uh, Craig West, who is a young half rob, isn't he? He looks like a he's, star that he's incredible. Like, I've I've just literally just to segue there. I've just bought a. Uh, Gnarly Bastards t-shirt today. I told him for months I'd sort something out. So, yeah, the t-shirt's on the way. Good. His products are very nice and you should purchase a few. It, it, but it, it's kind of like a lot of times the guys, you know, if the fans support the guys by buying some of the photos, by buying some of the t-shirts, especially the t-shirts, you know, it, it, it's a difference for the guys from them doing a lot better. People buy T-shirts, you know, it helps out. You know, because at the end of the day, training, food supplements, travel costs. Yeah, this is uh, this is what they've got to take it. This is what I think. This is what the fans have got to take into account. You know, the the, the hours of travel and, like you say, the money the money that goes into it. You know, the training. Yeah, and and the thing is as well, like uh, what fans have got to be realise is that people people are fallible and. They're also quite sensitive, and s- some people might have body dysmorphic. So, you know, there's been accounts where some of the fans are calling people's bodies or all that. They don't know what the guys have been through. You know, they, they don't know anything about them. Don't be over familiar with people you don't know. Um, respect them, and don't make personal attacks. At them. They're playing a character. Yeah. You know, a lot of the wrestlers are some of the nicest people I've ever met. Various, you know, there's some really kind, hearted, lovely people there. It's quite sad that people do that, though. You know, personal. I, I you know, it's more a reflection on them, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah. You know, if you love something, don't try and sabotage it. If you love it, appreciate it. And you know, this is why I was saying before about certain fans. They want to be a part of the business, and the best thing they can do is just sit down and buy a ticket, buy some T-shirts, support the guys in that way, because that's yeah. valuable. Without them, there's no show. They're, they're integral to success in the show. How, uh, how's Hangar 34 for the TNT shows, the new venue? Likewise, when I, see, what I tend to do is, if, if I'm there at the show, I kind of try and light it a little bit better and so we have to get there early to make sure the lighting's spot on. Yeah. Then it, then it's great. If the lighting's off, it can be a bit like that. The backstage area is really small, so I had to end up shooting stuff outside. Right. Like, okay. Literally outside. <laughs> uh, and I, I was shooting outside. I mean, I had to. I worked. Oh God. I worked with Will Simpson. He uh, does video. He's been doing the promotion. No videos for TNT. I, I begged them to get to get him in. Um, he's fantastic. Um, really good guy doing video packages. He just makes TNT look a million dollars. Really good guy, good person. Um, and so the backstage area is quite limited. So we have to do magic to kind of get by. So it keeps me on my toes. But I've got a studio that is like five minutes walk from there. So, oh, right, okay. I am tempted to start to grab the guys, but during TNT, it's it's such an onslaught because it ends up doing like pitches with the fans, uh, and then I have to do the live stuff, and in between, I'm trying to do the studio stuff as well. So it, it's crazy. I, I don't stop from the moment they get in. You know, the moment I get in, I'm working, and the moment they get back, I'm like, then I've got to edit the stuff. So it, it's just full on, full on, completely oh. industry full on. It's a... it, that, it's kind of one of the aspects of me is that um, I try and get things done as quickly as possible. But it, it's kind of sometimes when uh, recently, like in December and stuff, like I have four shows in a week, you know, uh, plus other freelance jobs outside of the wrestling. Uh, yeah, see, I don't think of that. You're doing other stuff on top of the wrestling, yeah. I, I think that was one of the problems with me is because it became so specialist at one thing, people contact me going, do you do weddings? I was like, yeah, I've done them for <laughs> one um, But because, like, as well, like, my background's an artist, so I run an art studio in Liverpool called Road Studios. Um, I, I run it with uh, two other people, so Rob and Sasha uh, as well. So, like, we run the studio. 
and uh, that took up a, a bit of my time. But during the past year, because the wrestling kind of took precedent again, so I've kind of backed off from a lot of my artwork because it can be very all-consuming at times. And uh, every with digital stuff, everyone wants everything here and now. So it's like, is it ready yet, mate? And you're just like, I haven't even left. I'm not even there. I'm still travelling for, you know, four hours from the venue. So um, I, I tend to do a lot of, like, late nights where I'm rushing stuff out, you know, just, just to get it done. But it's also making sure it's a, a high quality because if th- this comes back as well to, like, promotions, I think in many respects some promotions shouldn't be around, you know. If you don't invest in your talent, if you don't look after the guys, you don't you don't understand it. You just you're not hiring a photographer. You're getting the fans to take pictures. All you're doing is is, is making products that is quite potentially vulnerable, you know, for, for fans maybe never to go back because the show they went to was awful, you know. Uh, so them shows are less and less fan goodness, but. There are still people who, you know, everyone should be trained to a certain level. Who goes out there, if you're not, you shouldn't be there. You know, you just shouldn't be there. It's just dangerous. But it, it, it's also that, that point as well as, like, as fans who, who talk like photography jobs, you know, and they're not trained, they haven't got a clue. They're just a fan with a camera who contact promotions go, hi, I really want to do this. And it's like, well, you know, Maybe I want to be a movie star, but <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to be any good. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it, it's that it's that point of like sometimes the fans can undermine what they say they love because they so desperately want to be a part of something, but they haven't got the skill set to contribute. You know, in a positive way, they end up being more damaging. But you know, if you haven't got a skill set, you know what are you doing there? Like I, I don't go and watch wrestling shows. Because if I'm not working it, why am I there? Yeah, and um, this is where this is where I've questioned people like you know uh, what wrestling do you watch, and they say because they're in the business they don't tend to watch it. Yeah, uh, you know I still watch it. Yeah, I still watch it, but I wouldn't go you wouldn't go. It's frustrating. Yeah, I get you. It, it's one of them. Um, I work for various companies, and um, what I tend to do is is kind of help build them up. Like if someone like from the company like says like I get it from Saks a lot you know going like oh have you got this have you got this and I'd be like I have like a Dropbox like database with you know hundreds of images stored archivally of every match every show in systematic order so if you kind of contacts me I can go done you know it's just cut paste send so it's set up yeah so so it, it works with designers. Like, there's some wonderful designers out there as well. You know, there's, there's some absolutely beautiful designers who are, are just so skilled. And, like, when I see posters that, uh, you know, someone's just put together, there's no thought, there's no substance. They've robbed images. I've never worked with them before. You know, um, about the same thing. You know, because all they're doing is basically undermining the products. You know, everyone's got to learn, but not at the cost of other people. Well, like, just to go on, you know, copyright and all the rest of it, any any images I've had off previous guests that you've taken, you know, we've put, we've credited. Oh, yeah, it's fine. I would, I, never, I, I would never take, you know, take something without, you know. Well, I, I'm actually pretty relaxed over things. Yeah. Like, uh, work, you know, I retain the copyright to the images. Um, I've always done that because, um, you know, it, it's my artwork, like, in the future. You know, that, that's going to be essentially my way of making an, an income. You know, if I'm not able to do it, you know, by the history of archive. Yeah. And what happens a lot is, like, people just cut out the logo, you know. I don't put the logo massive because I don't want to spoil the images. But it, when people cut out a logo, what they're doing is they're just undermining the company. One, the company who's employed them is to the wrestlers and two it's my image and so you've got to understand that you know about themselves the bigger picture and you know I've, I've gone there like one of the reasons why I took images like I used to put a lot of my images on Flickr afterwards with a lot of the promotional photographs say the promos I won't put them online because they're 
they're done on Dropbox, which isn't for the members of the public to see. They're done basically as an access for that promotional company that I've worked for, you know, to be utilised for their magazine. I mean, sorry, not their magazine, but their poster, you know, for the for the match graphics. For yeah. This is to build up a huge database, which allows that company to define their look. So, you know, it, it's about defining, like, each company should have their own unique look. You know, there should be a certain aspect of what that company is looking like. I work with Vessel Island, uh, nice little promotion. You know, he, he gives a lot of guys opportunities. Who, who in the current scene, in closing, Tony, just to close out, uh, you know, like the world on a worldwide scale now, which which uh, superstars, wrestlers uh, float in your boat? Uh, well, I suppose I was incredible, and in actually photographed World's first match many years ago. It was part of WrestleFest, uh, Brickfest show in London. Um, it was part of an eight man, and uh, so Will Ospreay is just doing incredible. Uh, Zach Gibson, uh, James Drake, wow, they're, they're just a different level, aren't they? Um, they're doing incredible. Had a hell of a um, match last night. Yeah, uh, I haven't seen the end, so I won't, <laughs> I won't say, I won't let it, I won't let it slip. <laughs> no, so, but, but they're they're incredible, incredible people as well. Love great people you know I work with them with fighting spirit yeah uh, I work as well uh, Xander Cooper I always thought was such an, an amazing talent who never really liked his match with Will Ospreay which he won also Cooper this was a future shock Cooper also was like amazing with uh, Pete Dunne fantastic I can remember photographing Pete uh, Fight Club Pro six six years ago like before Pete became a big name and stuff. Um, I remember meeting Tyler when he was 15. You know, and um, Trent Seven was in charge of them, I remember. Like, as you know, Trent was Ben, and Ben was saying to me, like, you know, Pete and Tyler, they're going to be the future. And I remember him saying this, like, I think six years ago, and my God, was he right? He was incredible. It, it's wonderful seeing people like Tyler, you know, Will Ospreay, just incredible stuff you know it, it, it's kind of great when I photograph someone like four years down the line yeah the biggest I, I try and tell the Attitude Era uh, you know people who are pro Attitude Era and don't watch it anymore just how the, the, the level of wrestling these days is so much better and what they can do well if you look at like a lot of the Attitude Era I mean a lot of it you look at some of the matches they were rotten yeah it was it was um, it was the story on it and the promos yeah, More it's so. Just a story. You had someone like Austin, you know what I mean? It, it's like yeah. When you see someone like it's weird. Like you see like uh, all elite, right? All you have to do is go to a TNT show, and you'll see the future stars or some of the biggest stars. Support your local. Yeah. Support your local wrestling shows. If you go, it'll give some more money to be able to be to these people. If you don't turn up, there's empty seats. To do people. It's, it's it's important, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's like Jay Lethal was one of my favourites. You know, it, it it just Jay Lethal, you know, was work with Future Shock. You know, he was incredible, incredible talent, incredible person. But it's kind of like you know, look what's happening with Chris Brooks at the moment. Yeah, you know, incredible. Um, you know, the UK is such a melting pot of amazing talent. You know, and it sounded like just go to a TNT show go to a Future Shock show go to a BWR show you know there's things coming back to Morecambe pretty soon I'm not going to discuss it yeah but it's coming back and Morecambe was like one of the best places you could ever go and uh, see fans interaction because they, they thought it was real literally I've never seen this passion I uh, I read Greg Lambert's book so yeah. which one? Hey, Greg, Greg Lambert brought a book out, didn't he? He was on... What was the promotion again? Which, which book? I'm trying it's to... It was just talking about, like... It was just all about the history and, you know, when they were running it. Yeah. yeah I, can't remember, I can't remember the name of it because it was so long ago, like... But uh, I read it, like, it's brilliant at the time. Yeah. Well, the irony is, it's like, when Greg was doing, like, a lot of this book stuff and that. Like, I, I provided Greg with some of the images and stuff. But a lot of the events he wrote about, because he's a wonderful writer, Greg. He's great. I think he's absolutely incredible writer. But a lot 
of the event he was there, I was like, I was reading it, and I was like, wait a minute, I was there? I was in that room then. Oh, remember that conversation? So it, it kind of feels like an autobiography because I was there, you know. Been going many years, hasn't it? Well, you know, it, it, it's like anything. Things have flavoured in the months, isn't it? Yeah. You know, we'll always have progress fans who have only seen progress, and the only thing they know is how to chant, you know, but... Maybe if they diversified and went to a few different shows, mm. you know, they, they might realise that there's more... Yeah, variety. Yeah, than just progress. But, you know, progress have great talent. You know, but basically it is a WWE funded. Yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's a bit like a Transformer, isn't it? It's, it's brilliant. It, it's brilliant, the exposure and that, but yeah, it's, sometimes yeah. it's like sleep. But I suppose there's more chance for... More people are going up there. There's more chance for these youngsters, isn't there? Yeah. You know. Yeah. You know. Hopefully, with uh, you know Matt Richards taking the helm, there'll be more opportunities for more more northern talent to come through. Tony, thank you very much for coming on today, mate. It's a, right, it's been, been a pleasure. pleasure. I don't. I I want to get you back on. I didn't want to cut you too short, but yeah, I want to, if possible, love to get you back on again. Well, well, you know what would be. Uh, better way of doing it is get me and uh, Mad Dog together and let us do some commentary on something. Yeah, because yeah. Because we have to have chemistry. I need, to, uh, uh, I need to get myself a camera, I think. Okay. And take it, you know, take it, get you, get you both on, on video. Come down to a TNT show. Yeah, I need to. I've said this for the last year, Mad Dog, Mad Dog will tell you. <laughs> yeah, just do, just do it because it's yeah. going to be running Sundays as well. Yeah. So... You know, it's not that far from Wales. No, no, it's only an hour, mate. Yep. That's all it is. Right, Tony. Thank, thank, thank fa- you very much, Jim. No, thank, fun. thank you, mate. I've, I've, I've enjoyed it. I've loved every second of it, mate. Brilliant. And I've learned, okay. learned okay. a lot learned a lot more about you as well. You know. What? I, I just I just kind of stay in the, back, the background. What I'm not very good at is self-promotion. I'm just more of, like, in the background doing things. You're a, you're a modest and, man, Tony. And put myself over. Yeah. So it's not my role to put myself over. All right. Take it easy and thank you very much. Thank no. Thank you. Thank you for sparing the time, mate. All right, pal. I'll All right. L- bye for now. Take care, mate. Bye.